I think I know comedy, uh, you know, <laughs> comedy is it's just what you see. You, you hear a rhythm, you know, when a, when a thing is off cue just a minute and someone's too late picking up a cue, it's like driving a Mack truck through the scene and so forth. It just grows, it's, it's, it, and you just know it's, it's timing. Uh, and and uh, you, you, you just know, uh, and you know where to get twice the laughs by saying, listen, if you're so-and-so and so-and-so, and so it's just a, and it's a, it's a process of, uh, uh, and a process of growth. You know, I, I, I've often said, and I, and I know it's, 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 it's kind of an unusual, unusual statement, but, you know, the written word can be interpreted, you know, so many, many different ways. But it has a, a, as abstract as it is in its interpretation, when you've done it long enough, and I always felt, I just had an instinct what was going to work and what wasn't going to work. And it was just as concrete as a piece of cement in my mind. Maybe I was wrong any number of times, but anyway, uh, I felt that, uh, that, that it's a strange thing to say. The, the written word can be interpreted a dozen, a dozen different ways, but uh, there's always the right way and the best way, and, and, and I could uh, read scripts uh, uh, and say, gee, this, is, this, this uh, we blew it in page 32, just a thing like this. The lights go out for me, little, little things like that. Not so much in comedy, but when, particularly when you're doing drama, you know, and, and I've done many shows, you know. Uh, I don't know uh, whether it's there or not, but uh, one, one particular show I did on a Quincy with uh, Ronald Reagan. I have a very unique distinction. I directed one president and I uh, directed a, uh, a, bi a, a, a biographical incident on, on such. My life has been concerned with two, two presidents, and no president has ever had a film made about himself while he was alive, and Jack Kennedy, of course. But I did have the pleasure of directing Ronnie Reagan, an excellent experience in a marvelous, marvelous hour play. Uh, it was called... Uh, uh, it, it, it was a, a judge who sentences uh, a young man to, uh, to, to die, and it, 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 its title was It's a Cruel and Unusual Night. It's been a long time, and I hadn't even thought about it, but uh, a cruel and you, and it was a powerful indictment against, uh, against capital punishment, of which, oddly enough, <laughs> Ronnie was pro when he, when he became, a, you know, president, but... Uh, it, it was uh, on, I think, a General Electric Theater. And, and uh, it was just a, a, a fascinating, it, it took uh, an actor who was condemned to die through the last horrible, the last night. You know, they don't eat, they paste the floors and the, 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 so forth, and the shaving of the head and the, and, and, and the, the, the uh, prayers that come in and so forth. And, the walk down the carpet and that forbidding it was, uh, they had a drop of pill and I remember one thing, uh, uh, in the first act is, is, is just a powerful uh, statement against what, what really act happens to a man who knows when he's going to die at, uh, at two minutes after six. But uh, you talk about a director's input, something bothered me because you see him there and he's put in the gas chamber. And, uh, and I was always disturbed because you, you drop the pill and then the phone rings and, you know, and two masked guards are there and there's a man answers the phone and said, made the motion to cut and uh, the guards rush in. Now by, by then I figured, now, you know, it's going to be dead. And, and it bothered me and I talked to the producer about it and then and, uh, and it really disturbed me. He said, well, it'll happen so fast and so forth. But again, it, it bothered me. And in the last minute, I got the inspiration. And it was at the very last minute. I was terribly troubled how fast it could be. And uh, I, when the pill dropped, you saw the fumes slowly start to come up. I had an insert of that. 
and I cut to him, and he, and you could see him, he was holding his breath, hanging on to the last, just enough for audience to get it. Bang, went the phone, oh, the door opened, and out he came, and, and off they rushed him to the hospital. So you see, that's it's something that troubles, you know, in the writing and so forth, and I eventually, you know, that answered it. End of the story. He, he did go to the hospital, he escapes, and then he and his girl captures Ronnie Reagan, the judge who sentences him. They get to an abandoned warehouse, they put him in a cage where they kept all the so forth, and he, he said, I don't, have a, uh, I don't have a gas chamber, but I do have this gun, and now you're going to know what happens at six in the morning when you're going to die. You know, and then Ronnie was wonderful to work with, and, and the scene, it was, that, there was a lot of picture left and so forth, and then uh, in the last act, uh, in, in the third act, uh, Ronnie talks him out of it. But, uh, and there was something then, too, uh, <laughs> what, what directors uh, uh, put up with. I was terribly worried about the eight-page scene. There was an eight-page scene that, that should have been down to four, you know, and uh, it was it was it, it just way overwritten. Where Ronnie makes his makes his plea, and, and the, the kid changes his mind, and and, and can't do it. Uh, so, and I was over on footage. So I called uh, it was Roy Huggins who was producing this, and I called Huggins, uh, and I said uh, uh, I said. Uh, I, I, I rewrote the scene, and I've cut it down, and you won't miss a thing, to a three and a half pages, three and three quarter pages. I said, we're over footage. I said, I've got it all. Why, why shoot it all? This is it, and it'll be fun. He said, fine, got the pages to him. The pinks went out. It was two in the afternoon, and we were ready by then to shoot the scene. They gave him to Ronnie. Uh, they gave him to Ronnie, and he read it. And he said, no way. He said, I took doing this picture because of this uh, soliloquy, these eight pages. Along came, it went to the tower. Right? They came down to the stage and so forth, the casting director and everybody. And uh, Ronnie wasn't about to give in. Mexican standoff, cut the picture. Going into a seventh day, next morning, Ronnie came in. And uh, I went to his dressing room. He was charming, wonderful, but no, uh, he, those were his jelly beans and you weren't gonna take them away. And uh, he, and I, I, I said, you know, Ronnie, I said, it was terribly overwritten. And I said, but you know as well as I know, if I shoot the eight pages, it's my picture right here. I'm gonna shoot it in a master, I'm going into knee lengths, I'm going into here, I'm going to cross angles, I'm going into here, and I'm going into here. And I said, when they have that film, Ronnie, they can take it down to a two-page scene with all that coverage. I said, this is my baby. I'm going to do it anyway. Why shoot it all? They'll just cut it out. You might as well come out. He thought about it. He said, you know, you're right, Leslie. I, I didn't think of that way that you told me yesterday. And we went out and we shot the scene. It's a little story behind about what comes in and then what. And I, I should have mentioned it, but the, the, the people from the tower were down and I just walked away and, and sat there like a little old director. These are back stories that happen on director's input about, you know, the breadth. And the, but they're minor things, but they're, they're major things when you, you, you get to know where the leak is and where the script might lead you astray. That's that's instinct and comes from just experience and, and your your ability as a story to to know when, you know, the raft is going adrift.